the, the, the modern prostate cancer pathway is an imaging-based pathway. Uh, and, I, and I think, I'm not sure that the whole world has kind of recognized that as yet. Uh, and it's interesting, I was having discussions with a few um, biomarker, com biomarker companies, and they're still agnostic about whether we need to elicit a clinical, measurable phenotype. You know, um, because currently we diagnose prostate cancer based on a biomarker and a test result without feeling it, seeing it, or imaging it. And it's really unusual because there's no other cancer that we diagnose like that. You know, so everything else either presents with a lump or an abnormality on a scan, and then we evaluate it, we stick a needle in it to verify its nature. And I think, I think prostate cancer is kind of correcting this anomaly that happened in 1979 when the Stamey paper was published showing a high detection rate on random sampling uh, versus uh, finger-guided uh, sampling. Uh, and that was just based on the fact that we know that prostate cancer is prevalent. Stick more needles in, you're going to find more disease. And, and that error we've been carrying for uh, 40 to 50 years. And I think we're now correcting it. And the correction works in all directions. So if we can um, go for a phenotype that is measurable and reproducible, uh, we can use it to diagnose fewer men who don't have that phenotype. We can use it to diagnose those men better that will achieve much, much more precise risk stratification, which will then allow us to allocate our therapies with great precision. You know, and currently, as everybody's aware, uh, the problems with the prostate cancer pathway uh, are overdiagnosis and overtreatment, and also underdiagnosis and overtreatment. So, so um, although we'll biopsy fewer men, we will miss fewer clinically significant cancers. And so, it's all about the lesion now. And it's all about uh, how big is it, where is it, what's it near to, are there any other associated lesions, you know, um, is this lesion uh, posing sufficient risk to the patient uh, that it needs treatment or can we watch it, you know. So that, that la last one is a kind of probably a, a research question that we're, that we're looking at. Maybe that the future is that you'll, uh, you'll have an MRI with or without a PSA and if you've got a really tiny lesion, you might just watch it for a while. And if it starts growing, we'll treat it. Uh, and that, that's the way we manage small renal cancers. You know, if you've got a small renal cancer, you watch it. If it progresses, you treat it. And increasingly, we're using ablative techniques to manage uh, kidney cancers. Um, and obviously, we have those in, in the prostate. So, so, so that's a new pathway. But the new pathway also puts a big onus on us as, as professionals to have expertise in areas that aren't traditionally taught. You know, so it's um, experience in imaging, experience in guiding biopsies to a defined target in a 3D spatial context, and it's managing energy energy sources to uh, just selectively destroy tissue that you want to. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing that's worth noting is that um, we're replacing something that was simple and easy to do with something that isn't simple and easy to do. And, and, and many people get disillusioned when they find that out, you know, and, and a trust biopsy can be done by anybody, anytime, any place, anywhere. An image guided biopsy requires great skill and precision. Fortunately, they pay us for having great skill and precision. Yeah, that's how we earn our money. So uh, we, we don't earn our money by doing stuff that anybody can do. We earn our, our money by doing stuff that only we can do. So it's all about skills and competencies.